good morning, colleagues and everybody. Uh, Madam Chair, confirm if you can hear me. Yes, I can. Loud and clear. Okay, so uh, we are showing slides, and I will speak to the slides. Uh, so we, as Madam Chair said, we are here on the webinar today instead of the usual physical meeting at the Greater Accra Complex because of the events of COVID-19. Some of the issues that I will speak to, then if we can have the next slide, some of the issues I will speak to uh, are across what you see on your screen, if you can see it, the incident, uh, how we respond, the management issues arising, matters relating to staff, the lockdown, alternative ways of working, client issues, technology, financial matters, communication, when things return to normal and related matters. Uh, it's 20 minutes only, and therefore, I'm not going to speak necessarily in that order, uh, but I will touch on almost every subject. Uh, then it's, let's have the next slide. For starters, it is important uh, that we, we as lawyers maintain our values, even in the midst of the challenges of COVID-19. And in my view, again, if you can have the next slide, there are four core values that are important as we deal with this subject and all its ramifications regarding working from home. The first and what I consider the most important is the health and well-being of our staff, including ourselves. Uh, so that, that, that's the prime uh, value that we must stick to. The second is avoiding the spread of the virus uh, using, of course, of WHO and government of Ghana standards. Uh, the third being to maintain the support uh, we provide to the firm's clients. At the end of the day, as lawyers, we all have clients. And it's important that throughout this challenging period, we still maintain the support of the firm's clients. And last but not the least, uh, to keep the practice itself alive during the period and after COVID-19, because COVID-19 will have some very permanent, uh, uh, as it were, carry overs. And, and I thought I should lay this ground uh, as, as the core principles that everything that I would suggest we look at uh, are founded on. So if you can move to the next slide. Now, in, in an era like this, uh, as I indicated, health and well-being of staff is, should be uppermost uh, on our minds. Now, that means that the first thing we look at is handling uh, matters within the limits of social distancing as has been uh, recommended uh, by both the WHO and uh, our government. And you will notice that when it comes to the issue of social uh, distancing, the key issues that I think we should touch on relates to the courts and our offices. Um, now, the issue may relate more to spacing, and I think the judiciary has tried to put in place uh, measures for this. But in our own offices, it's important to observe some of these measures. So, for example, uh, depending on the number of staff you have, it is important that if you're having meetings, we are well spaced, or even examples that some firms have done is to run shifts in order to reduce the space. So I'm talking about the pre-shutdown pre uh, or lockdown uh, era, to reduce, to run shift so that the spaces between people will be uh, uh, observed. And it is clear to set down these protocols so that staff understand and is communicated to them very well. Now, managing the process of reducing contacts, uh, especially with clients, is not a very easy thing. And if it is not well handled, can be misinterpreted by clients. So they need to reduce physical uh, uh, meetings and move from physical meetings to e-meetings, such as the one we are having, uh, uh, telephone meetings, et cetera. And in, when clients visit offices, even after the post-COVID-19 period, uh, it may be important for them to have notices regarding the measures that have been put in place. So if you look on the right side of your screen, you may see that some measures are suggested as an example regarding the do's and don'ts. And I think before I leave this slide, I should touch on the issue of uh, the demanding clients. Uh, not all clients are the same. There are some clients who are very uh, demanding and notwithstanding the COVID-19, their work will still go on. 
and they may be putting pressure and working from home is certainly more challenging than working from uh, the office, albeit it may have its own advantages. So communicating these things to clients is one of the things management should see as very important that these measures have been put in place and clients ought to be aware. Uh, otherwise, a client, for example, calls in your office and uh, or the chambers and he's told to stand three feet away from the receptionist. And uh, if it's not properly communicated, they may take offense. So uh, if you can have the next slide, Dennis. Now, what are the responses as managers of firms we should put in place to respond to the WHO and the government of Ghana measures, uh, which is the lockdown measures? The key thing is that the head of chambers should play a lead role in this uh, because at the end of the day, it is the head of chambers who must give the necessary direction regarding what ought to be done. Depending on the size of the firm, uh, it, it may be necessary and I put there if necessary to establish a COVID-19 response team. And, and I want to put some emphasis on the fact that if this is done, uh, depending on the size of the firm, it's important to include, I'm seeing a different slide from what I'm showing. So, but, but let's keep, uh, move on. I, I, I'm sure that Dennis will fix it shortly. And then the other thing is whilst working from home to keep constant touch with staff. This is very key because it's very easy for us to ease, uh, it's very easy for us to ease into the home mode if we don't keep constant uh, touch with staff. The recommendation that others have made, and which I actually concur also, is to at least keep in touch with, twice, uh, with staff twice uh, a week. Uh, just check what is happening. And of course, if there are meetings and decisions on work to be had, it can be combined with that. Uh, and we all use WhatsApp. Uh, it's keeping in touch with them through WhatsApp is fine. Do, working remote, and ensuring that supervision of the work still is, I mean, uh, is maintained. That means some junior, as, uh, juniors who report to seniors may need to send their work for, uh, by email to be reviewed, etc. cetera. Uh, nevertheless, meeting client deadlines and, 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 and all that, and sending the necessary messages to clients that the work is ongoing, but it's ongoing from home. The next slide, please. Now, regarding maintaining the work from, I mean, uh, maintaining that and keeping the work going, Dennis, can we have the next slide? One very key, one very key thing we should observe, it has to do with the finances, and, and I will spend a, a few minutes on the finances. So, because we continue working from home, it's important to remember that we have to keep billing. And uh, based on the Ghana bar scale of fees, you either bill a lump sum or percentage or time-based inputs. I mean, all these apply based on the uh, Ghana bar scale of fees billing. The danger that we are likely to fall into, uh, and, and all of us, I mean, uh, ought to be thinking about this, is we, if we, for example, you bill on time, we may not be recording our time uh, whilst home. Uh, and again, I recommend that we all pay attention to, to this and to send invoices promptly. Uh, it, it comes up with its own uh, challenges uh, on, on, on invoicing away uh, from the office. Then collection, sending reminders to clients who have to pay the uh, uh, standing, because if you don't collect the money, by the time COVID-19 is over, there will be little income or reduced income. And, and there's, there's an expectation that income may be reduced. So it's important that we, the little that we can collect, we pay attention uh, to it. Then there is the issue of some clients who nevertheless may require advice even during this period in a formal form. So for example, you may be submitting an opinion in a formal form. Uh, that means that it is necessary to have electronic letterheads to be able to uh, nevertheless send uh, opinions to clients whilst not in the, in the office, since this is not going to go in a hard copy, but in an electronic form, which introduces the danger of having to do electronic signatures. Uh, the, the, the method I recommend is simply to 
type your name and use italics because in an event of this nature, sorry, criminals also uh, uh, use it for purposes of uh, crime and they steal your signature online. Uh, it's something that can have serious implications. So if you simply type your name and italicize it and you let the clients understand that for purposes of COVID-19, this is your signature. Uh, that's a recommendation I have. Then also the issue of how clients reach you during this period so that if they have work, you can still work and, and, and build them uh, as it were to keep the firm going. Emails, of course, telephone, of course, and WhatsApp. Uh, in respect of uh, telephone, I'm aware that some of us, uh, we do have challenges of putting our mobile phones on our cards uh, or uh, communicating it to clients because they may worry us. Uh, my recommendation for that is if the clients don't know your telephone number, it may be good to send them an email and either send them the phone number at this time or tell them they can still reach you through email. And then of course, uh, GRA has not stopped collecting these taxes and VAT. Uh, so again, it's important that based on government guidelines, uh, we nevertheless make sure that we are meeting our financial obligations. This includes staff salaries. Uh, I've had occasion to have a chat with some of my colleagues uh, in other firms regarding what happens to salaries if, for example, COVID-19 lasts beyond, uh, let's say, uh, a period of, uh, of three months. All these are issues that each individual lawyer uh, has to think about. That is, if you have staff, uh, if you are a solo practitioner, of course, it nevertheless arises. That means that trying to pace yourself, uh, reducing expenditure at this time uh, to ensure that uh, expenses are kept low and then uh, we can all survive uh, this period. If we can move to the next slide, Dennis. Now, technology, has come to stay with us. And one of the things that we may be tempted to do is to rush wholly to technology as a savior. It comes with its own cost. I mean, my own attitude to technology is that we should always remember it is a tool and not a master. And if we don't think uh, we may go just buying technology and incurring expense that at these hard times you should otherwise save. So there are Things that we all know already, mobile solutions, the very call we are having is on mobile. Uh, clearly, we are all mobile already. Uh, cloud computing, almost everybody is uh, 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 ensuring that uh, we keep in touch with clients through technology solutions. The only thing I would like to draw attention to regarding using technology and social media has to do with two things. The danger of confidentiality breaches, which I may touch on again, and more importantly, the General Legal Council guidelines of 2013 on use of social media so that we have to read it and observe it uh, as much as we can during this period. Uh, if we can see the next slide, I think one of the key things that I want us to remember is that we are already using 90% of the technology we require. And that is why I say that we should recognize this is a tool and not a master. Uh, the new medium of communicating in society has come to stay. So Facebook uh, is there, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, etc. And this may have both temporary and permanent uh, e effect. Uh, issues, traditional issues we, we, we deal with, like the postal rule, uh, may soon have to be redefined. Uh, uh, I want to draw attention to two particular things. The fact that you may see on the screen Alibi redefined, uh, Alibi redefined, that has to do with the technology relating to holograms, but let's let's skip that for now but two things are of important the fact that criminals are going to find uh, ways of invading and that's very very important and two facebook in particular there are a lot of uh, off-site working applications which are available for use these days uh hey space and a few things I, I may touch on just briefly before i conclude but that of facebook is of concern to me because Facebook has got what we call uh, uh, a workspace Facebook. The danger I have found is that it is very easy because it looks like Facebook to post something on Facebook if care is not taken, mistaking it for the office uh, space Facebook. So I thought I should uh, draw all of us our attention to that. Let's have our next slide. 
Now, as I indicated earlier, there is a downside of uh, technology. And the downside of technology includes the, the dangers with electronic signature, uh, identity theft, and confidentiality breaches. You will be surprised to know, Madam Chair, that somebody who is not a lawyer uh, sent a message to me uh, that uh, he had seen uh, this particular presentation and had registered. And then my quick reply is, but you are not a lawyer. He said, I bet somebody posted it on my platform, on that, on that person's platform, and said that it is free. So this person who sent it to me was attending because it is free. And I said, please deregister, uh, because this is meant only for lawyers. So if, for example, somebody posted it on a, on a different platform, it is Zoom, all right. You will see that you will be having a Zoom call. But there's somebody who is not a lawyer is on the call. Uh, there is a report about, uh, I think, uh, one of the schools who was doing, were doing lectures for children and some adult appeared in from nowhere. So these are all available, but it's important we, we are aware about the dangers. Now, let's have the next slide. What will be the impact for the medium to long term? I definitely believe rule of law will prevail. I don't believe that rule of law will come to an end uh, when COVID-19 is over. Let's have the next slide, please, Dennis. However, uh, there are some permanent changes that I think will occur. Dennis, are you there? Let's have the next slide. There are some permanent changes that I think will occur. For example, in the medium to long term after COVID, expect that you will go to a certain public place or public places and your temperature will be checked before you enter. Handshaking, for example, may become obsolete at least for 2020 until things return to very, very normal. Some staff may change their attitude. They may be used to working from home and may want to work from home uh, more. Some clients' attitude may change. They may demand that uh, we match up to technology, etc. Uh, so we ought to be aware about this. Let's see the next slide, uh, uh, Dennis. And then uh, also, even for our main stakeholders, technology will impact on them. For example, I expect the judiciary to make changes regarding uh, how we do our practice uh, in the courts. Uh, uh, E-delivery may become more prominent. Government of Ghana may Im uh, impose some technological changes. I expect similar things to happen at General Legal Council and other uh, places. Definitely, let's have the next slide. Definitely, there is change ahead of us. And it's important that we understand that in disruptive uh, occasions, uh, there are two types of disruptions. There are disruptions which are temporary. Definitely COVID is a temporary disruption. But there are disruptions which are permanent. And in both disruptions, either you have created a disruptive event or you have changed according to the disruptive event. And either way, you respond to change. And I thought that these things I have touched on, uh, which I've summarized them in the uh, second slide as the top 12 are things we should be aware of in these uh, times and we should uh, ponder uh, uh, about. Uh, I believe that Madam Chair and Dennis will share the slides with everybody after this. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and over to the discussions.